Hi guys, welcome to Hoops Junction. Today we're talking about Kevin Durant's knee injury. He suffered a grade 2 MCL sprain and a tibia bone bruise. He's going to be out the uh, rest of the season. He's out indefinitely. Uh, they're going to reevaluate him in four weeks. I want to start this video off by saying this. Anybody that rejoiced in Kevin Durant getting hurt, first of all, you need to understand that it's never great to see any stars get injured. When Kyrie Irving got injured in the NBA Finals a couple years ago, that was very devastating because, you know, not only were they playing without love, but then you lose Kyrie and, you know, it's an integral part of the, the, the team for the Cavaliers. So nobody wants to see players go down. We don't want things to be, like, tainted or... People to say, what if this, what if that. So you shouldn't be happy if Kevin Durant got injured. I saw a lot of people saying, that's what he gets. Trying to bandwagon, this, that, and the third. But at the end of the day, whoever your favorite player is, he can suffer the same injury. So I would take that lightly. You guys talk about karma and stuff. You never know. Like, something could possibly happen. A, 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 you know, the wind could blow. The guy could slip somewhere. Your favorite player could get injured and that's it. So you, should, you shouldn't never rejoice in other people's pain. That just shows who you really are as a person, which is a hater. And if you're a hater, like, I can understand if you don't like somebody, you don't like their game. If you're not, like, a LeBron fan, if you're not a KD fan, you're not a Stephen Curry fan. But don't wish for them to get injured. Wish for them to get beat, like, fair and square. Don't ever wish for people to go through bad things because that's the most, like, that's, like, the most inhumane thing. You should want for yourself what you want for... What you want for another, you should want for yourself. So if you don't want somebody else to get, if you don't want to get injured, don't wish injury on anybody else. I'm just, that's my little mini rant on that. I'm going to stop with that. Today we're going to break down three reasons why the Kevin Durant injury is not as huge as many would think. Reason number one, the Golden State Warriors already know how to play basketball without their star. We saw that Stephen Curry got injured against the Houston Rockets twice in two seasons. He hit his head. He had to miss one game two years ago when they won the title. Last year, he missed like a week. I believe it was against the Houston Rockets. He uh, messed up his knee, slipped on the floor. And he also, he too had a sprain on the, on the MCL, I believe. He stayed out maybe, I want to say seven games. So he missed like a week in the playoffs. So seven days, seven to ten days, he missed about a week. The Warriors in that time period, they were able to close out the Portland Trail Blazers in five. If you remember, Stephen Curry came back, I believe, that last game, and he had like 17 points in overtime, which is like the most points in overtime, I believe, in NBA history. So Warriors know how to play basketball without their star. Now, granted, they had a different team back then, but it's still the same concept. They know next man up. And here's, here's the kicker. They still have Stephen Curry, MVP. They still have Klay Thompson, great defender, great two-way player. They still have Draymond Green. They still have Andre Gudala, And they also have Livingston. So they know how to play without a star player in the lineup. They know how to win games without that. So for people to say automatically like, well, you know, they can't win. They can't win. You know, they won't even, they won't even make it out of the Western Conference Finals. You got to watch yourself there. Because they were able to beat formidable teams without Curry in the lineup. So, don't get that twisted. I don't, don't ever get that twisted. I believe last year they closed out the Rockets without Curry in the lineup. So, just relax. Like, take that, take that, out, take that off the table right there. They, they, do, they, they know how to play without Curry. They're damn sure going to know how to play out without Durant in the lineup. And Curry's in the lineup. If Curry's in the lineup, the team is always dangerous. You, see, you, got, you got two shooters. You got a defensive player of the year candidate. You got Andre Iguodala, lockdown defender. They know how to play without him in the in the lineup. Plus, they're adding Matt Barnes, which is another guy who's a gritty defensive guy where he could take some load off of Klay Thompson sometimes. The second reason why this injury may not be as significant as many may see, see it as is this. Kevin Durant will come back. Will he come back by the end of the season? We don't know. But we know he should be back in time for the playoffs. He essentially is getting a vacation. He's been playing about 33 minutes per game, which is not that bad. It's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't logged a lot of minutes this season. But the simple fact that he's coming back, and he's going to be on fresh legs. See what I'm saying? They, when they say four weeks, 
it's it's precautionary measure. They want to make sure that they don't ruin his career or ruin their chances this season or the following season. They're just giving him extra time. Curry was able to come back much sooner and, and make an impact. Even though he was hobbled, he still made somewhat of an impact. You're giving Kevin Durant four weeks of rest, and the season's pretty much over. They're, they're already 50 and 10. They already clinched the playoff spot. There's nothing much for him to do. So basically, he's going on a little mini vacation. You know, he can go to Cancun if he wants. If he, you know, he can he could have a good time, rehab, drink margaritas, just relax himself, get some great rest. He doesn't have to be on the road. So when he comes back, either this, the end of the season, or first round or second round of the playoffs, if let's just say they advance to the fir- advance past the first round, he is gonna be on fuego. He's gonna be burning down the house. Get your women and children, cause he's gonna be killing it. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like when when Lil Wayne went to jail. He had to do like a little jail time. He came out with all these ideas, mixtapes. He had he wrote a book. He just had a bundle of energy, and that's the thing you gotta understand. Like the Warriors are in the playoffs irregardless, so he, they don't have to fight for a spot. So Kevin Durant going this little mini. This is a mini vacation for him. Yes, it's an injury. Yes, it may affect how he plays down the stretch, maybe, but you're giving this guy a month off from basketball operations. He's going to come back 100% ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, a, a, a lot of arguments, people will make arguments for Joel B to be rookie of the year. But here's the thing. Joel B takes two or three games off. He comes back, and he's energized, he plays a great game. You're giving Kevin Durant a whole entire month off. He's going to come back. He's going to light people up. <laughs> Left and right. I'm sorry, guys. He's going to light people up. The third and final reason why this injury is not going to hurt the Warriors' uh, potential NBA Finals run is this. People underestimate the Golden State Warriors in their system. I repeat, people underestimate the Golden State Warriors in their system. People underestimate the Golden State Warriors as a jump shooting team. The Golden State Warriors get a lot of interior baskets. Their system is proven, and it's one of the best systems in the NBA. It's kind of patterned out the Greg Popovich system, but it has a lot more fluidity to it. And they will win games without Kevin Durant. You're, you're underestimating. If you're telling me that Kevin Durant goes down, and the Warriors still possibly can't make any noise. And you're expecting him to come back. And you think they can't hold their own. They have a two-time MVP. They have Klay Thompson. Both of those guys shoot over 40% from three. You can't leave them open. So you're still, you still have that issue of how do you handle those guys. And those two guys know how to play with each other. We saw this in the Western Conference Finals. They're down 3-1. to one, Getting blown out. Getting their butts busted. And they made a comeback, uh, a crazy comeback, which was which was ten times better, in my opinion, than the NBA Finals comeback. Because the NBA Finals, people got suspended, people got hurt. In the Western Conference Finals, they were able to make a comeback. No one got suspended on either side. Westbrook was 100%. KD was 100%. They figured out a way to win. If they could figure out a way to win with their back against the wall in the Western Conference Finals, down 3-1... to one, I'm pretty sure they could figure out a way to win without Kevin Durant in the lineup for the next four to six weeks. You, I repeat, you, you guys are underestimating the Warriors if you're thinking that they possibly can't still make some noise. If you're like, oh, well, they're going to drop. They can't get out the first round. They can't make... If Kevin Durant comes back in the lineup and they could just stem the tide, all they have to do is stem the tide. They're already 50 and 10. It's just stem the tide and you're good. They could win. They could beat teams like Sacramento still. They could still beat... All the, the usual suspects, they could beat them. They, they could still get 10 more wins or 12 more wins. So for people to just write them off automatically, it just means that you're underestimating how good the team is. They lost a key cog. Yes, they lost one of their best players. Yes, but they still have the nucleus there that went basically 73-9, and nine, just minus the depth. And if they could go 73-9... and nine, like they did last year, and they're already 50 and 10, they could reel off 10 more wins to, to keep the home court advantage. Like, 
people just kill me like they just automatically think that they're gonna lay down and die. You think a team like that has had so much success? They've won over. I think Steve Kerr has won over sixty percent or seventy percent of his games. Like he has like the best coaching record in the first two or three seasons in NBA history. So you 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 don't think they could figure something out? If you possibly think they can't figure something out, that you're you're bugging. Ever underestimate the heart of a champion? Just like people didn't underestimate LeBron James in, in last year's finals, you can't underestimate the Golden State Warriors team. Like if the more you write them off, the harder you're gonna make them play. The harder you're gonna make them play, the more butts they're gonna kick, and the more they're gonna prove you wrong. So I think people just underestimate them way too much. They think. These guys are just jump shooters. They think they're soft. They think people just can mow them down. At the end of the day, like, you know, what you saw against the Wizards is this. KD goes down. They're down 20. They were still able to tie the game numerous points. Now imagine how they play when they expect for them to be out of the lineup. They're already going to know what their roles are and what, the, what and everything is defined. That game, they were stunned. Anybody would be stunned. Anybody wouldn't play the right way that they're supposed to because their guy is out. So, anybody that's thinking that they're just going to lay down and die, I think you better rethink that notion. This is Vlad from Hoops Junction, where Hoops meets Hoopla.